So today we have another piece of good news. We want to describe it as good news, right? The number of uh, new infections has gone down a bit. I mean, I mean, even though it's not a significant uh, number, um, but it, it certainly is, uh, is, uh, is telling us that we are moving toward the right direction. Yes, moving along with social distancing. But it means that next week, Songkran Festival is no festival for Thailand, no holiday, <laughs> no water splash, no celebration, yeah. and no inter-province travel to Kuntep Chai. Yeah, it's going to be a very dry Songkran and very unprecedented that when you have Songkran that you cannot celebrate, you have no, no festivities, no water splashing, and not even having, uh, having a chance to pay respects to your parents, to elderly members of your family. Because yes. this is something that is being strongly discouraged by the authorities. So it will be very unique Songkran indeed this year because everything has to be virtual even though we like to pay respect to the elderly, to older generation in the family, yeah. we have to do okay. it online yeah. or pay That's respect right. or have water okay. splash online at least. Yeah. So what you see on the screen right now is something that will be missed. This year, I mean, people being together in big groups, I mean, paying respects to elderies, splashing water with each other, I mean, but, but this will not happen. At least that's what the authorities want to see. Yes, it's a must. And our Prime Minister, Prime Minister Prayut Chan Osha, just addressed to the whole nation just about an hour ago, Kun Chai, and he says strongly that no celebration, no inter-province travel, <laughs> no water splash festival, and no public uh, gathering for Songkran right. this year. Yeah, he was repeating an instruction from the culture ministry, uh, which uh, came out uh, last week, that set guidelines for Thai people on how to celebrate Songkran. So basically, this is going to be a very quiet and dry Songkran. As we all know that uh, a ban on alcohol sales in Bangkok and many other provinces has taken effect already and will be in effect until the 20th of April. That means the next, next 10 days, there won't be sales of alcohols uh, anywhere in, in Bangkok and most other major provinces. And curfew still remain in place from 10 p.m. until 4 a.m. in the morning. But some other provinces have go beyond curfew, Kuntep Chai, especially yes. they announced the whole province lockdown in order to curb in this battle to curb the spread of virus, especially some provinces in the south like Phuket, Yala, and some other provinces. But there are still some exemptions for, for this holiday and next week. Exemption from curfew, Kuntep Chai. Like That's right. officials on assignment still can commute during the night time. Medical personnel, people needing medical care, still can do some transport and commute during the night time as well. And transport of essential goods such as food, fuel, medical supplies and equipment, pharmaceutical products, postal packages, import, export products, and newspaper. These are exemptions from curfew. And also other exemptions include transport of people destined for quarantine and people traveling to and from airports, services for the homeless, food delivery, garbage collection. Also banking, insurance and communication personnel, rescue units, public utilities, maintenance personnel, people working on shift, fishermen, rubber tappers, veterinarians. These are all people and working groups who are exempted from curfew. That's right. You not noticed that uh, rubber tappers are people in one of the professions that will be exempted from the curfew. You know why? Because rubber tappers, they wake up very, very early. They go out on the rubber plantations and as early as three in the morning. So the curfew had really certainly affected them. And they had made an appeal to the government for the curfew to be relaxed 
for them. Yes. So the list of exemptions that Kunata just read uh, is basically a clarification of an earlier list of exemptions, which was a bit by difficult for people to understand. And that's why the government issued a new list today to make it clear as to which professions and which particular group of people will be exempted from the curfew. Yes. That starts at 10 p.m. And, and ends at 4 a.m. the next morning. So what is clear right now is no extension of hours of curfew and additional exemption of curfew in which specific occupation still can be allowed to commute during late night hours. That's right, yeah. Dr. Tawi Sin Wissanu Yotin, the spokesman of the center fighting against the coronavirus today, again, I mean, came up, came up with the figures that people keep waiting for every day, right? So as you mentioned earlier, that the number of new infections has gone down to 50 today from 54 yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, there's still, there was still one death. And uh, now Thailand ranks 20, 44th in terms of the number of infections. But the interesting point made by Dr. Tawisin uh, is that uh, there are more young people getting affected and became fatalities. And he pointed out at the people of age group between 20 and 29 that he said uh, these are people that are getting more and more susceptible to, to the infection. So it's a kind of a warning from him to, to young people. The, a point, it's a point that he has been stressing in every press briefing the past few weeks that young people should be too complacent, believing that they are young, they are physically robust, so they are more immune to the, the virus than older people. But the statistics show otherwise, Kunata. <laughs> Yes, because in practice, in daily life, these are working age group of people and they may still quite mobilized, quite mobile in terms of their daily life. They perhaps still commuting to work, but they are quite immune in terms of physical of themselves. But they can carry some disease and that can mean more risk <laughs> for the elderly member in the family. That's why he tried to ask for this age group 20 to 29 to refrain from having close contact to the family members and try to keep social distancing and be quite mindful to the family members. Otherwise, it will bring more infection to the family in particular. And one more point uh, made by Dr. Tawisin is that the young people tend to go out more than older that's people, right. right? They go out, they hang out, they drink, and that's why they are more, more so exposed to infections than older people. Even though they're physically more, more robust, there's no question about it, but, but the exposure that they, that they have I mean, make them exposed to the infection, yeah. Yes, but when we compare the curve of other ASEAN countries, Thailand, is doing quite okay, Kuntep Chai, especially we are in the middle of the ranks of infection in ASEAN. After Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, and Singapore, especially the case in Singapore has risen quite recently in the past two days. It just risen quite sharply. So according to Dr. Tuisin, we have to try to flatten the curve. And so far, we have done quite okay, but of course, we still have to maintain this strict measure of social distancing, working from home and stay at home.